Welcome to Eye Contact, a video news programme on issues and controversies in ophthalmology sponsored by Eurotimes. I'm Paul Rosen and we're here at the 19th Winter Meeting of the ESCRS in Istanbul. Today we're going to be talking about how best to handle cataract surgery in eyes with weak zonules. And it's a great pleasure to welcome Dr. Bekir Aslan, who is the head of the department at the Lid Hospital in Ankara and here in Turkey. Welcome, Bekir. Well, thank you very much, Paul. The first question is, eyes with weak zonules present a number of challenges for the cataract surgeon. I just mm. wondered how you assess them preoperatively and what things you look for. Well, thank you very much for the question. But first of all, I would like to thank all the uh, attendants to ESRI Istanbul. Uh, it's, it's really a unique opportunity for all ophthalmologists to take part in this occasion. And, uh, and then I pass to the question. And of course, uh, weak zonules is somehow a great challenge for the cataract surgeons. When you sometimes uh, meet the, those cases, and you get real surprises. So to avoid the surprises, there are a few occasions that you must be very careful. Patient history is the top important one. If the patient gives you a history of trauma and other issues, then you should be very careful about evaluating the lens. The second is apparently behind the slit lamp. Behind the slit lamp, there are some uh, points that you have to consider. Uh, Facodonesis, iridodonesis, and especially uh, uh, on some occasions, there's a dark, uh, dark moon just appears behind the iris. It means that there is a dislocated lens in one way or other, but this dislocation is, should be evaluated following, uh, following uh, dilation of the eye and should be considered what to do afterwards. There is another point that you can uh, make sure how, uh, what the condition of the zonal, zonal system is just during the surgery. If you get into the eye and try to make a cataphthorexis, you will see uh, difficulties, you experience great difficulties in puncturing the anterior capsule. To, to, so you need a very sharp instrument to puncture the capsule. But in any way, when you see a difference in the anterior chamber, a narrow chamber, a, 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 a irregular anterior chamber, always means that there is something wrong with the zonular system. So during the surgery or preoperatively, history and sleep lamp should give you a lot of idea. And one more point, of course, is of course, the, the good old te technique, diagnostic tool, retroscopy. If you perform a retroscopy on these cases, you will see irregular images which you cannot, which you cannot uh, make a regular one as you're doing retroscopy. So I benefit from that. Uh, and I, when I do a retroscopy on an eye with a, a loose zonule or dislocated lens, I clearly see the uh, red reflex irregular, and it gives me an idea that there is something wrong over there. And I take every care. Okay. So the next question is, what techniques do you use for removing the crystalline lens? Well, uh, there are numerous techniques apparently, but uh, always there is uh, there is there should be a rational to remove a lens with the, with this kind of eyes. You know, the rational is stabilizing the capsular system. There are many tools for that, and the, the first one is to stabilize the capsule. Um, uh, with, the, with the iris hooks or with the hooks that are specially made to fixate the capital system. And also, if you have a more extended zonular dialysis system, then you may refer to plain capsular tension rings or capsular tension rings with the fixation point. Or sometimes, you, if you don't want to rotate those tools, you may need a, a tension ring that is a segmental. A segment tension ring may help to uh, relieve uh, the uh, forces or distribute the forces properly in the capsular back. That's number one point. And the second point about removing a dislocated lens is, of course, using uh, dispersive viscoelastic to cover the loose areas. Mm -hmm. Then viscodissection with the dispersive viscoelastic is a very good idea to uh, uh, make lens uh, uh, come anteriorly or uh, just separate the lens material uh, from the capsular bag. And uh, thirdly, of course, you need some uh, specific FACO parameters and you have to decrease the values as low as possible. And once uh, uh, it, it is uh, named as slow motion FACO with low parameters, and once you do that, you will be safe in the anterior chamber. Of course, it is, uh, timing is very important with regard to this uh, 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 applying to tools. You know, when you apply 
uh, 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 hook to fixate the capsular bag, your uh, cortex can be removed fairly easily in comparison to when you put a capsular tension ring early. If you put a capsular tension ring early, removing of uh, the cortex should uh, could be fairly difficult. Do you ever use a first or a segment approach? Retracting the lensectomy approach. Oh, well, there are occasions where I prefer I prefer uh, uh, parsplana approach, and that is, you know, when I when I see a subluxation or zonal deficiency, and when I see that uh, if I see a flat uh, flat uh, deficiency area, then it means that the zonal system in the other areas are fairly strong. Mm -hmm. So I don't prefer uh, a posterior segment approach. But if I see a zonal dialysis with a round edge of, of the lens, then in that case, uh, if the zonal extension is more than eight clock hours, uh, if it is more than I can afford in the high, then I switch to I switch to removing that lens through parsplana techniques, which is very uh, wise to do. And of course, you know you need special uh, other techniques to rehabilitate the eye. And do you have a rule of thumb as to? the degree of zonular disinsertion when it comes to putting a lens in the bag. How much of the zonula has to be intact for you to be able to put a lens implant into the capsular bag? Well, if the zonular dialysis or zonular laxity, in other words, is less than eight clock hours. That's your... That's eight clock hours. I uh, put, the, uh, put everything in the bag. Okay. And of course, uh, uh, between, uh, between uh, zero to two clock hours, I can only put, I may put a, a intraocular lens uh, haptics into the sulcus and optic into the capsular bag, okay. captured optic. Yeah. That would be very, working very well. And if I have a zonal dialysis of four, two to four hours, then in that case, it, would, it may be wise that I put a capsular tension ring mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, distribute the forces evenly in the, the capsular bag and put a very nice uh, um, uh, hydrophobic lens that opens in the eye uh, properly, you know, I mean, uh, with the less elasticity, yeah, so that's the, but if it is more than four clock hours, I would consider fixating the, fixating the capsular system to Siclera, either through the eyelet of a capsular tension ring, mm -hmm. namely Mulligan ring or Sioni ring, or I may just switch to uh, uh, fixating the IOL itself to the Siclera or some other location which is appropriate. Do you ever use um, iris clip lenses or anterior chamber lenses? Well, uh, I, have, I have quite a bit of experience with anterior chamber lenses, very limited experience with uh, iris clip lenses. And I, um, I personally think anterior chamber lenses are fairly good adjunct for our surgery. And especially uh, the, the lenses with the four points, uh, namely the Kelman lenses, will survive well in the anterior chamber. And I think it is wise to put an anterior chamber lens into the eye, provided that endothelial cell count and other issues will uh, uh, keep that person survive for the rest of the life. Okay. So you have to take into consideration other points. Um, no, it's a very fascinating group of patients and hugely yeah. diverse. Yeah. Are there any sort of uh, pearls that you can give uh, our, our viewers uh, mm -hmm. treating these the very, a very interesting group of patients? Well, first of all, uh, every patient should be looked for. Uh, uh, every patient should be looked for uh, a possible zonal or dialysis system. It is. It is. It is. A, it's a must that you dilate every single patient prior to surgery, and in case you experience uh, this kind of def deficiency in the eye. Then it, is, it would be wise that you take care of eye pressure. That's very important. In these cases, you may have trabecular system changes. So eye pressure is a very important point that you have to take care of. And you have to take also care of the anterior cell count. Mm -hmm. And you have to be very careful about your techniques that you're going to apply. If you have a low endothelial cell count, and if you're going to play in dial longer than it should be, then everything is in vain. So whatever you do, so that's a very important point, and you must be prepared to do that. And apart from that, you have to have the capacity and understanding to use viscoelastics as a tool. And these viscoelastics may help you to relieve some of the problems, some of the issues that you may encounter easily.
especially dispersive scholastics, as I mentioned, is a good adjunct to cover the area where there is a vitreous loss possibility, yeah. because once you cover it with the dispersive scholastic, then you can have a very good coverage on that, and the likelihood of bringing that uh, vitreous to, to further anteriorly is little, very little chance. So, on the other hand, um, using cohesive viscoelastics is also a challenging point. And if you have a contact with the vitreous, then using cohesive viscoelastics may drag all the vitreous out through there. So, in these cases, take care of uh, the amount of zonal laxity, take care of the patient expectations, take care of uh, eye pressure and the endothelial cell counts, and in these patients, be aware that follow up should be more than uh, uh, detailed than you do standard, yeah, yeah. standard cases. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for well, uh, taking part in this interview well, and uh, thank you for organizing everything here in, in, in Turkey. Yeah, so kind. Thank you. For all more information on this and uh, related topics, please visit us at uh, eurotimes.org. And thank you for watching us. Thank you. Thank you.